All right, so let's be real here. At one point, everybody watched Fast and Furious and they saw the Psychogen Eclipse and they wanted one. Hey, all I can say is that was there too. But then I went out looking for one and all I saw was jump. The first one I ever checked out, I got there, it was like some lady selling it. She didn't know what she had kind of deal. She was calling her grandpa Poppy and she was like, let me get Poppy on the phone. Poppy knows about this, Poppy, Poppy, Poppy that. Me and my dad were like, what in the world is going on? This lady's using Poppy too much in one sentence. And I know everybody's got a special name for their Papa, Poppy, Poo Poo, whatever the name might be for your grandpa. But if you're talking to somebody that's not in your family and does not know the secret lingo that goes on, just keep that to yourself. Just refer to him as, hey, my grandpa knows about this. Not saying, Poppy, Poo Poo knows this. Poo Poo, Poo Poo worked on the car before. He knows what's going on. Like, I don't know who Poo Poo is. Damn. Well, we kind of passed on it because not only she didn't know what she had, but she didn't care of what she had because that thing was not maintained. I mean, the damn thing wouldn't even start. And to be clear, it said in the ad, it did start. I bet something like this has happened to you before at least once or twice. Well, we kind of passed on it because Poppy didn't know what he was talking about and there's a bunch of problems with it. But that seems to be the problem with all of the second gen eclipses. It seems like all of these were just bought up by Ricers and instead of taking care of the maintenance and trying to preserve these cars, they just went to the AutoZone exterior section and just bought all the things they could. I mean, they special ordered the Ricer Wing Special Deluxe Double Decker. They got every decal they could and then they got the blue exhaust tip. And that might deter a lot of people. But for you guys that still want a Sega Gen Eclipse, this is the video for you. We're gonna be going over the years, the trims, the common problems with these cars, some of the rarest parts that you can get for these cars that add value to the car you're looking at, and last but not least, the five rarest colors you can get for the second gen Eclipse just to stand out a little bit more. So the second gen Eclipse was sold from 1995 to 1999, and after that they decided to make the dumb decision to roll out the third gens, which were just complete junk. I mean, no more GSX trim, are you kidding me? So for the first year in 1995, you would think this would probably be the worst year, because in most cars it is. It's the first year it comes out, there's gonna be problems. But there's a couple things that set this year apart than the rest, and one of them being the smiley front bumper. If you've had a Miata in the past, you'll feel right at home with this. It also has the EPROM ECU, which is actually tunable. So in some cases, you don't even really have to worry about buying a standalone ECU because this one, you could just, you know, fix it up a little bit, tune it a little bit. And the last thing is that if you're lucky, which I don't know, it might be a blessing or a curse, but some 95s have rear vented disc brakes. Now that's all good and dandy because vented disc brakes are better until you figure out there's no aftermarket support. So if you want to go drilled, you want to go slotted, sorry, no can do. They don't make it because very few cars had it. For 96, you thought that 95 was going to be the only year with the smiley front bumper? No, you can also get it in 96 too. And you also possibly could have the EPROM ECU. You may, you may not have it. From 97 to 99, they switched out that smiley front bumper for a fish-like front bumper. I mean, who doesn't like their car looking like a fish? And they also added the famous basket handle uh, Eclipse spoiler that pretty much all of us know this car for. Now let's talk about the trims we got for this fine steed. We've got the base, we've got the RS, GS, GS Spider, GST, GST Spider, and then the GSX. Starting with the base, it's gonna be front wheel drive. All of these were, except for the GSX trim. It came with 140 horsepower out of a two liter 16 valve dual overhead cam Chrysler motor called the 420A engine. I guess if you're into smoke of weed, maybe this car stands out to you, but for everybody else, this is the worst model. Then you got the RS. Uh, this one comes with a tachometer while the base doesn't, and it had an optional spoiler. GS, now you're getting some luxuries like a power antenna, driving lights, cruise control, body color, door handles. Yeah, if you got the base model or the RS, yeah, they kind of cheaped out on you and just gave you some black ones. They bumped you up to the big boy 15 inch alloy wheels for the early years, 95 and 96. Later years came with a 16 inch, yeah, lower body cladding and a rear spoiler. For the GS Spider, I mean, from the name, you can entail that it's going to be a convertible. And the only other thing that the GS Spider has different than the regular GS is that they changed the motor in it. Now you think, oh, that's great. You know, they probably added 10, 15 horsepower to overcome the weight that the convertible added. Turns out they had a bunch of dummies in the boardroom, but they decided to change the motor to the 4G64 Mitsubishi motor that made 141 horsepower. I shit you not, they changed the motor for one horsepower. Now one trim above that, you've got the GST, and now we're getting into the trims that are actually kind of valuable. 
All of the trims under the GST had around 140 horsepower, but for the GST, they gave you a 210 horsepower 2 liter turbocharged 16 valve dual overhead cam Mitsubishi Legendary 4G63, which you probably know from the Evos. Some other items that are specific to this trim are all of them coming with 16 inch five spoke alloy wheels. From 95 to 96, this is where you're gonna have the two tone uh, lower half of the car being gray with the low rise spoiler. From 97 to 99, you're gonna have the high rise spoiler and all of them come with a double tip stainless steel exhaust. You could also get the GST and the GST spider trim. Only difference is it's convertible. They didn't decide to change the motor for one horsepower this time. And the tippity top trim that everybody wants is the GSX including me. This is pretty much the all-wheel drive version of the GST, and it came with that same 4G63 motor that everybody loves. On top of that, the early models came with 16-inch wheels, and I promise this is the last time I'm going to say it, but they bumped up the wheel size again to 17-inch wheels for the later model years. This is also the trim that came with the vented disc brakes in the rear if you bought a 95, and it also came with dual piston front calipers. Now that we got all that info out of the way for the trims and years, now let's move on to the common problems that you might find on the second gen of you're looking at. Let's start out with the most common problem, and those are brokies. These cars were super cheap for a long time, I think longer than most cars that are this cool. And because of that, a lot of high schoolers bought them. And just like me, I decided to put a turbo kit on my stock car without changing out the internals. Luckily for me, I bought a Toyota, so it works fine. But if you're buying a DSM, you might have a couple problems. A lot of people like to turbo these 420As, and they're just not meant for it. And with the abuse a high school student puts on a turbo motor, that thing is going to be blown. If it's not blown, it's going to be blown. So don't buy it. You're just saving yourself a lot of trouble. But that doesn't only go for the 420As. The GSTs and the GSXs were also super cheap. Back in the day, you could get one for three grand, like five, ten years ago. And because of them being so cheap, who's going to put a lot of money into a car that's cheap? So they skipped out on the oil changes, skipped out on the transmission rebuilds, just skipped out on pretty much everything that the car needed, and instead decided, oh, I'll, I'll keep the money and I'll buy a bigger turbo. On top of that, if they did try to do maintenance, they probably did it the cheap way and bought eBay parts. So steer clear of all of the rice dot ones and look for an unmolested one, which might be harder than it sounds because it's an eclipse. But other than that, here's a couple other common problems that you might have. Uh, these door handles are super easy to break and they're a pain in the ass to fix. So if you don't want the pain in the ass, lightly lift the handle, then stick your hand in between the door and the car and open it up from there instead of just yanking on the handle. If you're looking at a 428 turbo car, best bet is just to drop it because that thing is going to be a pile of problems. But if you do get a regular 420A without the turbo, you might have a better experience with your Mitsubishi Eclipse. You're probably going to have less problems because these ones were not beat on as much if they did not have a turbo kit. Now people can take a turbo kit off, so just make sure that the car never had a turbo kit and uh, was taken care of. If this is the case, these are probably going to last you a lot longer than buying a crappy GST or GSX. Back in the day, these things were fast and people raced them a lot. So even if they were taken care of, they didn't have the easiest life. And the 420As, I mean, those things are slow as a snail. Nobody was ever thinking about racing those until they put the turbo kit on it and then the first race down the drag strip, they blow it up. Another common problem for the interior is the passenger side airbag corners. They kind of peel up after a while. You've got two options. If you're feeling a little risky, just delete the airbag and buy a Carbonetics airbag delete, or you can go find one in the junkyard, but most likely those will be peeled up too. So I don't know, you, your best bet, probably delete it. And I mean, it's a DSM. It's not really a safe car to begin with. So might as well just make it a little bit more unsafe. Another thing you wanna look for is a timing belt. These are an interference motor. So make sure it's been done recently. And if it hasn't, or if you don't know when it was last done, make sure to get that done right after you buy it. Because the last thing you want is your car to blow up two months down the road. I know if that happened to me, the car would be back on Facebook Marketplace as a show. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's move into the rare parts that you might find on the car you're looking at. These cars, did not have too many rare parts but what is rare is super rare and one of those things is clear taillights now back in the day supposedly from a video i watched if you had these you got pulled over because they weren't reflective like a red taillight and they're also just kind of ugly so not that many people bought them and the people that did buy them and put them on their car took them off and probably threw them in the trash once they got a ticket after spending all this money on some taillights they are so rare that the forum that I found this on, the guy had to specify that he had them so that people thought he was cool. And because of location, if you're in the US, all of the European domestic market taillights, folding mirrors, and fenders are also kind of rare just because they cost a lot to import. Another really cool thing that you can get is the OZ wheels offered on the 99 OZ Rally Edition. Unfortunately, they look like any knockoff wheel you find a discount tire. If I had one of these cars, I would not be looking for these wheels because, like I said, they're not special. I'd get some SSRs, but they are rare. 
Also, another thing that's not OEM, but is also pretty rare. The, like I said earlier, the door handles break a lot. And some guy back in the day was making aluminum door handles. I guess he doesn't make them anymore. I don't know if he died. I don't know what happened to him, but he didn't want to make the money no more. And uh, so they're hard to find. And the last thing is a full black interior. These are in high demand. Nobody likes tan or white or any of those other colors because they all get dirty and black is the only one that looks good over time. So if you find one in the junkyard, make sure to take it out because if you don't, the next guy in line's gonna. Now let's move into the five rarest colors you could get on a 2G Eclipse. For number five on this list, if you wanna be like a knockoff Roman Pierce with a 2G Eclipse, even though he never had one, the Sundance Plum Spider is perfect for you. Unfortunately, this color only came on the convertible models, so if you see a coupe with this color, it's definitely been repainted. And I feel like this is just the dullest shade of purple you could ever put on a car. Dodge's Plum Purple is a great bright purple color. This almost looks like a purple that's been mixed with brown. This might be the color of your poop at the end of the day after going to Taco Bell. For number four on this list, uh, we have Everett Green, and you could also get this color two-toned with Logan Silver. Now this color is so damn rare that when I type it up, like, four actual pictures of eclipses come up and then a picture of wheels and food come up not sure how it relates google has its own weird ways of doing things um and then also shows another green car which is the next color on the list so these are like the only three pictures that i could find i gotta say if this is the color it looks pretty damn good for number three we have the other two pictures of green that were shown and that is oslo green now this green, I mean, again, they just picked the worst shades of a color possible. It's this very light green and it almost looks like, I don't know, puke? Now the only color they need left is earwax brown. Next on the list is probably my favorite color because it's actually cool and doesn't look like a nasty thing that comes out of your body, and that is Celtic blue. Uh, for some reason, the ones that I'm seeing look like it's a bluish color but has a purple pearlescent, and that is not like any other color I've seen so far in this list. I'm really digging this color. If I was getting Eclipse, this is definitely the color I'd get, and I haven't really seen another car that has this exact color on it. And for the number one spot, of rare colors these are in no particular order is kona blue and i gotta say that it looks like a blue on a cheap car well i hope you guys did enjoy this video of a buyer's guide on the 2g eclipse if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe down below for more buyer's guides other content vlogs whatever you name it i probably make it i am one versatile dude leave a like down below if i haven't already said that join the discord play video games and talk about cars and i'll see you guys in the next video peace out